little lamb. It's a season where we need much joy, and music brings us a lot of joy. So, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all the singers who have come together today, for their dedication, for all the hard work in the musicians and those with voices. We thank you, Lord, for all the people who have come here today. We ask for their safe travel home and that they take the music with them, that they remember and can enjoy the holidays through song and story. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I have something else to do here. That would be wonderful. Okay. Well, as you all know, Beverly Melville has done the cantata for a number of years, and she's also been our organist for uh, a long, long time. I think she started playing at the age of 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. Younger than that. Younger than that. <laughs> And uh, we really have appreciated that, and she has recently retired because it's just getting <coughs> too much to do all that's required of practice. And so we'd like to give you this for our appreciation bell. <laughs>
God is the reason that we're able to have music. Because he gave each one of us skills. And an afternoon like this is even more special. Because it's given us the opportunity to honor our Christ, Jesus Christ. To do it through music. To bring again alive the story. The story of his coming. The story of our really was so honored to be able to do this each time we have the opportunity to do it through our own talents. I hope you enjoy this. This is the lion, the lamb. It's a contemporary story in many ways, and you'll hear that in some of the narration. Some of it is a little poignant to its other times, but most of it just tells that old little story. And I hope you enjoy this. I'm asking that you do not applaud between numbers. Please hold your applause if you think we're worth it until the end. <laughs> Some of us are getting older, and so we get easily confused. <laughs> and we you know, every time I stand here, I get a chance to do music in this space. It's because this is where I started as a musician. Arnold and I sang, and he taught me how to sing. Beverly was the organist, and I learned about music. So when I first started, this is where it started. And this is a special place. And we hope you enjoy Little Lion, Little Lamb. And I hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lion of Judah. Lion of God. These two names of Christ seem to be contradictory in character, and yet they beautifully describe how our Savior relates to us without either opposing or diminishing the other. The lion symbolizes strength, fierceness, protection, and kingliness. He is a regal ruler and defender, a seasoned warrior. We first hear prophecy of the Lion of Judah in Genesis 49, when Jacob, later named Israel, came to the end of his life and gathered his twelve sons to his side. In this meeting, Jacob spoke to each of them in what can best be described as poetic prophecy, telling each son the future of his family tribe. Zebulun would dwell by the sea and provide haven for ships that pass by. Although one of the smaller tribes, many judges would come from the cunning family of Dan. Joseph would be highly blessed and fruitful in spite of those who meant harm to him. Jacob went on to say, Simeon and Levi were like two peas in a pod, hot-tempered and always ready to fight. This did not please Jacob, and he told them that their tribes would one day be scattered for their lack of self-control. Asher. One day Asher would become wealthy and famous for his culinary skills. His candies and sweets would be known to kings and dignitaries. The tribe of Gad would become soldiers, and Issachar would be the salt of the earth, blue-collar farmers who tilled their soil-rich land. Naphtali. Naphtali would be fierce lovers of freedom, gentle to their friends, formidable to their enemies. The list went on for each son, as Jacob spoke of things that only God could have shown him. And then he came to his son Judah. Judah, you are a lion's cub, and the king's scepter shall never leave you. One day your brothers will honor you, and the nations will obey you. As prophecy unfolded, Jacob's words about each tribe came to pass, and as the children of Israel became increasingly oppressed by sin and by their enemies, they became desperate for their lion of Judah, their defender, the Holy One, who would heal their spiritual diseases and bind up their brokenness. Much like the children of Israel, sometimes we wait for God to step, step into our lives into our camp complicated situations and into our wounded hearts. We wait for him to deliver us. Maybe you are in the time of waiting. You have already welcomed the Lion of Judah into your life, but there are areas that are still broken. Be, be encouraged. Just as the Lion of Judah would come at the perfect anointed time, he will also come to us and deliver us from evil. And so we wait.
in the video. He can watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone, shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger.
little lamb. In Old Testament times, the lamb was a symbol of innocence, purity, peace, gentleness, a sacrificial substitute. Pagan kings would often send lambs as a peace offering to their enemies, <laughs> literally a payment of peace, as seen in the first verse of Isaiah 16. And so, through our little Christmas lamb, this symbolism became reality when Christ was born. He offered us innocence before God through his sacrificial substitute. He was born to be the payment for our peace with God because he himself is the Prince of Peace. During the Christmas season, we often repeat the angel's proclamation of peace on earth. We sing the phrase in well-known carols. It is stamped on the greeting cards we send to our family and friends. It is painted on the ornaments we hang on our tree. And yet, we recognize the irony, because the world seems to be less at peace now than ever before. Our communities, our cities, the nations of the world are continually at odds with each other. Individuals are not at peace, often at war with themselves. Families are not at peace. Even believers who have the Prince of Peace struggle to find rest in their souls. So, where is this peace that was promised? The peace the angel proclaimed to the shepherds. Where do we find that? If we are looking at our circumstances, we will not find peace. If we are looking to others to help create the peace we desire, we will be disappointed. If we seek the peace in our government through elected officials, we will become delusioned at best. The peace that was offered is the peace that was offered is peace with God. A bridge where there once was a divide. We can have peace from our past because of a substitute lamb. We can have peace in our circumstances because the lamb dwells within us and he is our peace on earth.
everything changed. We are given a warrior lion who will fight for us so that we can have peace with the Father. At that moment, we were given a lamb who would substitute himself so that we can claim the riches of heaven. And from that moment, nothing was the same. Everything became new. <clears throat> Thank you. 
crash. We couldn't give it. We join the angels and the shepherds and the generations of people who believe, and we lift our voices. We lift our hearts to offer praise to our Lion, our Lamb, our King. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Blessed is he who help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets his prisoners free. The Lord opens his eyes to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise, Praise the Lord.
Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks for coming.